I was one of the first through COVID to tell you that interviews for adjustments are being waived for both employment and family-based cases. Guess what? It's back. Also, interesting news uh, on issuance of work permits. And finally, there's a case in the Supreme Court right now, Chevron, could have substantial ramifications for immigration law. We're going to talk all about it. Hey, my name is Umberto Gray, attorney at law, and you can get me at hrg at graylaw.com. That's the only place to get me. A lot of excellent news to get to today. So let's get at it. All right. I give you real-time cases in my office to tell you what's going on. It is absolutely incredible. Adjustment of status cases for both employment-based and family-based cases are being waived. No interviews and approved, but more dramatic, I am seeing the issuance of work permits after filing the adjustments adjudicated in 30 days. Here's some real cases, folks. Look at these notices, I-797 notices, approval of work permits. You're going to see two things. You're going to see, number one, the rapid speed in which I'm getting my approvals, 30 days. Number two, look at the dates of issuance. Five years, folks. Five years for work permits. It's fantastic. That is wonderful news. And we see this trend happening at the beginning of the year here. These cases were filed sometime in December approved already in January. I think we're going to continue to see this. They're trying and trying and trying. Work on the backlog of cases that are pending right now. Let's continue to follow this trend. I'm going to give you real-time adjudications news, okay? All right, another method that's happening in order to alleviate the backlog with State Department. I talked last week a little bit about stateside issuance of H-1B visas. They finally gave us the information on what's needed to be done. And I want to explain a couple things about this to you and clarify a couple things from uh, my video of last week. First, I put a link in the description box here. I'm going to give you an article that really outlines pretty clearly and easy to follow the requirements of this stateside issuance of the visa. That's basically where you can actually get the H-1 visa stamp in your passport inside the United States. So one thing they talk about uh, is Mission Canada and Mission India. This is where your visa was issued at the U.S. consulate in India or Canada at any of the various consulates in those countries. That's what mission means. Mission means any of the consulates inside of those countries. If your H-1B visa was issued at one of these posts abroad, you may be eligible to get the visa renewed inside the United States. Also, a little clarification, you could be from any country as long as your visa was issued in Canada or India, you qualify regardless of nationality. Also, this program was tried in the in 2000, but ended in 2004. You know, previously I said this is the first time this is happening. It's not. So note also start date, right? Start date, remember, is January 29th. It's coming quick. You only have until April. So if you qualify, get it in. Again, my link sends you to the State Department uh, website, state.gov, shows you exactly what you need to do. It's limited to those countries where there's no reciprocity fee. What does that mean, okay? Again, I put a link in the description box below. Go to State Department here, look at reciprocity. Two things here I wanna say. Number one is the MRV fee is the actual DS-160 fee. It's different from the reciprocity fee. The reciprocity fee is usually a fee for certain countries. Once the visa is issued, you have to pay. So you can go to the website here, see if your country is one of those countries that does or does not have a reciprocity fee. This H-1B program only applies to those where there's no reciprocity fee. Alrighty, so another bit of good news, folks. Syria redesignated for TPS. There's a couple things here that I want to clarify to make it easy for you to follow this and understand what it means. So what you need to know is that immigration usually extends TPS for certain countries. You can see here on the website where they've extended usually 18 months designation for TPS. There is usually a 60 day re-registration period. You have to be mindful of that. If you're in TPS status, you must re-register within this time period. Make sure that you're able to get your application in so you can benefit from the extended TPS status. If you don't re-register, you can file a late re-registration, but you have to show good cause. 
If you don't show good cause, then USCIS may commence removal proceedings. So this is very important, folks. Go to this website, understand what redesignation is, make sure you get your application in on time. All right, there is a case called Chevron. The case was decided in 1984, and it says generally that administrative agencies have deference in terms of their decisions that they make. So in our case, in immigration, we have the BIA, the Board of Immigration Appeals. After a decision in the BIA, if you appeal to a higher court, some of the circuits, the Ninth Circuit, for example, here in California, the Ninth Circuit will give deference to any decision of the BIA. Well, the Supreme Court is thinking of overruling Chevron. What does that mean? That means that administrative agencies that are tasked with interpreting regulations, because regulations are often ambiguous, so you have administrative agencies that interpret those regulations uh, and make decisions. If Chevron is overturned, then that ability to interpret regulations will go back to the courts in general and not the administrative agencies. There's an argument to be made for the administrative agency to be able to make these decisions because they know the particular industry. Courts, they don't know the intricacies and the nuances of a lot of different industries. So the argument is that let's leave this to the BIA. You still have a way to appeal decisions to the court, but of course you must exhaust your administrative remedies. In our case in immigration, that, that means make your appeals, go to the BIA, and then you go to the courts. So this case is currently with the Supreme Court. I'm gonna follow it. I'm gonna give you updates. I'm gonna let you know what's happening, okay? All right, YouTube family and GN subs, thanks for watching Great Law TV. Go to my playlist with my content. Good stuff, folks. Look at the frequently asked questions. I delineate the questions and I link the video that answers those questions. And uh, hey, we'll see you next time.